Paul Lachlan to take the kick. Joe Lydon and Steve Sims alongside me. The fans are not too sure who's going to win. The coaches weren't too sure. What about you, Joe? Well, Ray, I'm, I'm, I too must climb off this fence, really, that I'm sitting on. I think today's game, for me, is far too close to call. While Leeds did win both league fixtures, uh, Bradford under Brian Smith have gone on, undergone an almost complete squad rebuild, and I think they might supply a few surprises. Well, I think uh, Leeds will be too strong today. They've had the harder of the games. They've played some, uh, some tough clubs on the way through and been successful. And I also like the, the blend of youth that uh, Leeds have in their team now. They've got something like nine players under the age or around about the age of 20 or 21 year old or younger. Leeds won both uh, championship matches in the centenary season, but only by uh, close margins. And of course, as we know in the Cup, that counts for very little. Gary Christie having a good uh, touch of the ball, the grass quite bare there in the middle, I think uh, this pitch about to be reseeded very shortly. But good strong tackling on uh, on both sides. Robbie Paul trying to move it out to the this big three quarter line, Lachlan, good pass out there to, uh, to Scales. Former Leeds uh, wing, Bradford a very, very big uh, side, big pack, Donoghue. Looking for a gap there. Good gear pass there to Paul. Paul just tackled five metres short of that uh, line. But it's Bradford going for the line! And it's Bradley, he drops it. Play on, says referee Collings. Well, a golden opportunity gone begging there. It was a great opportunity there for... Uh, you'll see Bradley, dummy house, sees the opening, but he just drops the ball. Now, that's good referee from uh, Stuart Cummings. He took his time. Let Leeds take the advantage and play on. And we can see the force of the tackling there, the ball spinning out of George Mann's gas there from the strength of the, of the tackle. Bradford again on the attack, they've started well of the Bulls, charging in Carl Furbank, trying to keep the ball flowing, back to Sonny Nickel. Nickel, former St Helens star, Great Britain second row, but well looked after by Kevin Iro. Christie again, trying to get the game playing. Bradley, good long pass out there to his uh, former Aussie mate, Donegar, to Lachlan. Good defence by Leeds, out wide there. Callan driving in. Short pass to Fairbank. On the fifth uh, tackle, Bowles sensibly using the blind side and switching in there! Good try from Scales! How wide there! No hesitation this time from the referee! That was superbly done by uh, Bradford! They hammered the ball in short around the play the ball, then flipped it to the left, and here's the try. Superb move from Bradford, using this short side, there's little interpassing between Lachlan and Scales, and Jonathan Scales slides over in the corner, great start for Bradford. You'll see here Bradford attacking the blind side on the last play, Bradford will do that a lot, especially uh, heading for Paul Lachlan's side, and they've scored a good try. Yeah, the little short pass it was what did the trick, Lachlan drew the man in, and Leeds have no answer to it. What a fantastic start for Bradford, they've bombed one try, Great reply after that and scored one. And the former Leeds uh, Academy player scores the first try. And Paul Cook, again a former Leeds player, with the kick. Will these men come back to haunt Headingley this afternoon? He kicked 74 of those goals for Leeds earlier this season. A vital one here for Bradford, but from the touchline. He struck it well, and it's an accurate kick! Straight between the uprights, a jump for joy there from uh, Paul Cook. And Bradford last at Wembley 23 years ago, and a little earlier in these early stages. Well, if it's confidence Bradford needed, they certainly have it. Not only a great try in the corner there by Scales, but Cook adding the two points. 6 0 to Bradford. You see here, Louis, the biggest problem, they never come forward off their goal line. Lachlan there, he's got two on one, offloads outside the Scales, and Scales is too strong for a great Bradford try. Well, 
leads then desperate to get right back in there. Francis Cummins playing in the, the centre. Harvey Howard had such a good game the last time Leeds were uh, on television. And Brian Smith, the former Hull and St George coach, will be a happy man at the moment with just five minutes gone. And the ball 6 0 in the lead. Five minutes of frantic football. It was Bradford that came out and had a 20 minute warm up session here on the pitch just before kickoff. And it certainly seems to have paid dividends. Knock on. It really is a frantic football. You'll have a look here, high kick from Holroyd. Christie can't handle it. And this is the first time that Leeds have been in uh, Bradford's territory. Ray, what you'll find today is that both teams will use their left-hand side of the field to attack. Bradford will use Lachlan a lot, and Leeds will use Iroh a lot. Big difference there in the, in the pack weights, I'm sure. That uh, might tell in the closing stages with those charges down the middle. But it's uh, Leeds now on the attack. Jamie Field, teenager, a couple of teenagers in this uh, lead second row, spinning it across the field. George Mann, good ball back inside to Holroyd, to Mike Forshaw. Plenty of movement, plenty of uh, flow with the ball here, using the short side again. This time to the youngster Adrian Morley, former Eccles amateur player. Holroyd, George Mann. Nice little rubber kick there from Mann, a tester for that Bradford defence, but well. Picked up there. High nice scales. Again, this uh, leads defence moving in very, very quickly. Referee Cummings got them a full ten metres back, but uh, two very fit sides. Both sides done an awful lot of intensive training over this uh, past month. Relaxed a little this week. The, these players went to go kart racing. Again, Bradford trying to make use down this third left hand side, and it's the big, powerful Donagher keeping that ball moving. Back to Lachlan again. Good coming from Paul Lachlan. Oh, switch inside there to Knox. Well covered. Well covered there by Anthony Gibbons. One tackle remaining in this sequence. Bradford moving it along the line. Oh, they were. Still picked up, but a forward pass. Certainly Bradford using that left uh, left flank a lot, Steve. They'll use that. They'll use that a lot, a lot of times. Brian Smith will work that out. Now Carl Fairbanks, it's the last tackle. He's in a no-lose no situation there as long as Leeds never come up with the ball. And Leeds do come up with the ball. I'm sure they'll uh, want to hold on to this... Uh, this ball two in this sequence of six. Phil Hassan there, the younger wing. Many youngsters in this lead side. And uh, Richard Duckingfield down there on the bench, who certainly set up at a fine pace, Richard. Yes, and uh, no doubt on the Bradford bench, they feel that they've got to maintain this momentum. That's going to be the important thing, that's going to be the crucial thing in this game. And uh, significant how Paul Lockley's been involved in three of Bradford's best moments so far. Condition is just about perfect. It's dry, there's barely a breath of wind. Medley on the bench there, former Great Britain uh, player for uh, Bradford. I'm sure he'll play a part later on. Ryan McDermott, prop. Again, moving it down that left hand. Robbie Paul switching, moving. Oh, beautiful footwork from uh, Paul. Just couldn't quite get away from Cummings. Good tackle from the lead centre. But still, these balls are coming forward. And they're coming from depth as well, Ray. The players definitely on the Bradford side are attacking on this left hand side and attacking from depth. Donagher back to Lachlan. Oh, he's got scares again! And it's Bradford in again for a second try. Scales having a field day down that uh, left hand side. But it's Lachlan and the big Aussie forwards who are doing the damage. Donagher down there. Scales again, in for his second try. Robbie Paul, the Leeds defence are holding off Robbie Paul, they're letting him dictate the play, he runs into the defensive line, offloads to Doniger, Doniger then to Lachlan, and Lachlan gives it to Scales to score a second try. Yeah, great ball, Robbie Paul just running at the defence, causing problems, Doniger finding space, a little flip pass inside, there's Lachlan on his shoulder, and Scales on Lachlan's shoulder to go over the try. 
I think this is a fine exhibition, Steve, for any youngsters watching of how to draw a man. Yeah, Robbie Paul, he took the ball up to that defensive line, then offloaded the ball when he had numbers. They had three on two there, Bradford. They had to use the hands, they done that well. Brian Smith has certainly picked the weakness in the Leeds defence. Leeds aren't shifting across to their right-hand side enough. They're staying too tight in that defensive line. They've got to spread out a little bit and adjust slide across further. Slightly easier kick this time. Paul Cook, 10 metres in from his previous attempt looking to add the conversion and he does the roar accompanying from the Bulls their supporters the smiles on the faces tell it all Bradford Bulls 12 leads no Bradford definitely on shot of confidence they're using this left hand side of the field to attack Robbie Paul the pass again but just watch off the, on the replay as Lachlan gets the ball, scales perfect position on his inside, comes off the wing to take the gap and the ball and the try. Paul Lachlan again then to restart and uh, George Mann fielding the ball. Chuck to Morley. Well, Dean Bell certainly looks uh, pensive. Seven times Challenge Cup winner with Wigan. He knows all about... Uh, what is needed to get to Wembley, and a long time to go yet. Just a rush of blood then uh, from the fullback um, and uh, Anthony Givens. He done good work then, then tried to un unload under pressure, and, and Leeds have come up with an error inside their own half again. Bradley causing some damage to Nickel. Certainly very big in all the departments. Good work from Anthony Givens. Fairbank, he's been out some time with an injury, this uh, number 10, former Great Britain tourist. Bradley again, this time to, to Callan, oh it's Callan, he shrugs off a couple of tacklers, and Matt Callan's in this time, for a try out wide, well certainly leads, vulnerable down the flanks, and the Bulls are really exposing them out wide there. All Callan had to do was to run straight, and a try came. This is actually right, the flat pass came to Callan, he managed to beat the defender on the outside, and once with the strength and power that he had, he manages to get over the line. Leeds must be truly shell-shocked here, Steve. Ah, oh, they've got a huge hill to climb now, climb now, Leeds, but it's a great ball out wide there to Callan. Now, Kevin Iroh, he doesn't get anywhere near him there, just grabs at him, Callan fends off Iroh, Mike Borshaw's coming across, he can't get to him also. Callan can see the line there, ball in two hands, puts it down for, a, for the third Bradford try. And it's Bradley distributing in midfield, Joe, who's causing problems. That's right, this time a flat pass, but a wide pass. And once um, it got on the outside of Kevin Iroh there, it was a straight run almost to the line. Once again, you'll see, Leeds have come up with an error in their own half. Bradford had capitalised on it, scored a try. Leeds need to control his football and they need to score, they need to be the next scorer. We're speaking to Brian Noble off the uh, Bradford coaching staff just before the game, he said they were confident, but surely even this scoreline at the moment must have shot them. Well, I think it's certainly surprised both coaches, it certainly surprised the fans, they thought it was going to be a very even contest, but as I stress, a lot of time remaining. Oh, but again, a good attempt from Paul Coop, this time just curling away in the face of the post. So, Bradford, never mind the kick, will be happy with that scoreline. 16 points to nil. Who would have thought that? You'll have a long, good long ball out there. Now, Matt Cullen does it all himself here. Gets past Ira with ease. Mike Borshaw, he can't get across to him. And Bradford, they're on a big high now. But Lee, Dean Bell, now he must be wondering what's going on here. He's shell-shocked. He knows that his team must go next to have any chance of winning this semi-final. With Brian Noble on the Bradford bench. Brian, this is a sensational start, but there's a long way to go. Yeah, it's a great start, but we've got to keep our composure and pay some attention to, this, to the things that when they've got the ball. It's your momentum that's important now. You've just got to maintain it, haven't you? The composure is the key. We've just got to keep our structure, keep doing the things we've been doing, keep working on the things we've been working on, and as I say, pay some attention to this side of the game that we're doing now, the defence. Thanks, Brian.
almost 15 minutes gone 16 points in the back uh, for Bradford and Joe Leeds have got to hold the ball haven't they they've got to go through these sequences of six just to get themselves haul themselves back in the game yeah, and get the confidence back it's a big job now for Harmon the, the captain the new captain of the lead side he really has to settle his team down start playing a little bit of control football and get some possession and turtle the main thing Leeds have to be careful of now they don't panic don't try to push in because there's still plenty of time in this game. They've got to settle themselves down. And as I said before, they must be the next scorer. Donahue again working that uh, back line side. Oh, and Robbie Paul. Well, it was a well intended uh, pass, but uh, just couldn't be taken. You'll have a look here. Ball inside. Bradford just can't handle it there. And uh, Leeds, they also knock on. Bend down, pick up the ball. Harvey Howard, little knock on. Good referee again, Stuart Cummings. He, uh, he's seen it. Good scrummage there from the Leeds' point of view. To Kevin Hyde, oh, not the penny from him. And Francis Cummings here. It's a race for the line. He's got the pace. He's got the speed. And as I expected, Leeds a straight back. A superb movement there in the midfield behind that uh, pack it was a good scrummage the ball came out very very cleanly it was switched at speed between the halfbacks and francis cummings well he used to be a wingman and he shows the pace joe the perfect answer the plan move kevin arrow draws two defenders in cummings on the loop round the back hidden from the defense and then into acres of space and a straight run to the line but a plan move that worked for leeds and one that they surely needed to get back into this game a great ball from Kevin Iroh, stands up Matt Callan there, you'll see Francis Cummings into a big hole as I said before, there's a lot of young lads in this lead side, they've held their composure and now they're back into the game and I think one uh, problem for uh, Bradford was that the full back, Paul Cook, had actually come up in the line Steve, yeah well you, you've got to mark up, but then if anyone makes a break, it's very difficult to stop them from set scrums, you should have the winger on the opposite side, or the uh, centre on the opposite side, covering across to uh, in cover defence to cover that. So leads draw back. And Graham Holroyd with his first attempt at the conversion. And it's not a bad attempt, but just not good enough again across the face of the post. No uh, wind out here at uh, the McAlpine. Well, not much happier from Hugh McGann and uh, Dean Bell, but I'm sure they must be pleased by this try, Joe. That's exactly what they needed. Matt Callum played a little bit too much attention to Kevin Arrow this time and was really drawn in by that bit of play. Cummings on the loop around the back of uh, Iroh into the space and, as I say, a straight run to the line, but it's definitely what Leeds needed. Leeds runners up to Wigan for the last two seasons and with a fine Challenge Cup pedigree. 10 times winners, 16 times the finalists. Donahue, good uh, surging run down the middle there by the, uh, the hooker. Ryan McDermott moved up into the front row position, normally a back row forward. Bradley, good tackle there by Morley. He spotted Carl Burbank coming in there, but again down that to short side, it's Bradley again. Had an operation a month ago on, on his thumb. Brian Smith, the coach, took a gamble by playing him today. His first game back. That's a good kick. Oh, and that's well taken again by, uh, by Anthony Gibbons. Gibbons, a late replacement coming in for Carl Hall. Eye on the ball, steady as a rock. Takes it superbly. Both teams have actually been uh, well up to the kicks, Joe. Yeah, they've been, both teams have been well on defence really, I mean Leeds had a shaky start but it was basically down to Bradford's skill and attacking prowess. But both teams have, have started re really well on defence. Mr. Mr Cummings just spotting uh, Gary Christie, Bradford wing, offside. So another six for Leeds and this again will give them the chance to gain in confidence. Neil Harmon the skipper, leading from the front. Holroyd. George Mann. 
Not the best of passes, but well picked up there by Cummins. George Mann again, 16 stones at uh, standoff. Normally a second row is this uh, big Tongan forward. Owen Shaw going away from the acting half back. Very quick at number nine. Holroyd. Well, well intended kick, Joe, but uh, unfortunately it didn't come off. That's right, you've got a good point out though that both number nines here today, both hookers, exceptional pace from Dummy Half, Donahue and Shaw, and I think that'll be an interesting part of the game. We'll have a look at the kick here. It's bounded off the uh, Bradford player. They've fallen on its play on. Brad Leeds did have the numbers on the short side then. I think if they had have attacked that, run the ball on their right-hand side, they may have come up with a try then, Leeds, instead of using the kick. Bradford a good cup record themselves. 12 times Challenge Cup for finalists. The last winners way back in 1949. And, well, that is significant, 67% there for, uh, for Bradford. Yeah, and a great start for them. Leeds will be looking to this uh, big wingman, Jim Fallon, to do some damage. Hassan helping out. And getting through with good uh, cover there, good tackle there by Robbie Paul. Paul, the number seven there, noticed acting as the sweeper, six or seven metres behind the Bradford line. Good, good passing there. But Shaw looks lost. Just lacks support at the final pass. You see Hassan that just come in there, made that little break. He has played in the back row, uh, and he's a very strong runner. Still leads coming forward, and it's all right, beginning to move in midfield. the kick and it's a good one well covered by Gary Christie there did well to get down bouncing bobbling close to that line Paul Cook and uh, Christie there doing good play in that corner it's quite hard to, to realize that this is a semi-final usually very tense tighter for certainly for the first 40 minutes this one has just been thrown wide open with some great enterprise in rugby fantastic spectacle it's as if both teams have thrown off all the curves of a semi-final job. Maybe the rest, the break that they've had uh, after the short uh, centenary season has done them well. They're all fit and ready to go. Play on. Not a knock on. The ball uh, went behind us. Out. Anthony Gibbons just. Uh, 19 years of age, one of the many youngsters in the, uh, the Leeds right team. Here's another one, Jamie Field, former Dewsbury amateur, just 18 years of age. Certainly a lot of youngsters coming in the game. Marvin Golden there on the bench. Neil Harmon, he's got space out wide there. Oh, and it's Cummins again. He looked for support inside in. There was none there. But Bradford now desperately backpedalling to Holroy. Good long pass to George Mann, picked up by Forshaw. One tackle remaining in the sequence. Holroyd again playing into that corner. And caught there in the in-goal area by Christie. And that means a tap on the 20-metre line. I think Holroyd would have annoyed himself there, really. Very annoyed. It was a very poor kick into the in-goal area and giving Bradford possession. There were many, many options open to him, and I think at the, at the end he, uh, he chose the wrong one. Jeremy Donoghue. Surprising uh, teammate Jason Donoghue there with the pass. And those are the sort of mistakes that allow a team to come back in. Leeds desperate to capitalise on this uh, type of mistake. It should be the scrum down, it'll be Leeds head and ball. Mr Cummings sensibly just uh, telling both props to have a breather until Holroyd arrives with the ball. Both scrums gone with the head. 16-4, still for Bradford. George Mann. George Mann put there at loose forward. You know, leads a tremendous record of standoffs. Mick Shudnott and Gary Schofield, Lewis Jones, Vic Hay, 
it's a gamble. It is a gamble. That's why uh, Brian Smith's chosen to put Bradley also in standoff to take care of the size of George Mann. Two big 16 stone men then confronting each other there at the half back position. Mann and Bradley. Very Paul keeping a close eye there on, uh, on Donahue. Back to Holroyd. Holroyd. Play on. Anthony Gibbons. Speculative pass, but it's well picked up by Cummins. Can he get that ball away? No, he can't. Well tackled there, not wide there. Back to Fallon. Jim Fallon, not very happy with that, but uh, not much another, else he could do. Another poor kick, he uses left foot really. Would have been better to kick it inside. The ball just goes into touch for the scrum. You notice that Nick Shaw. Bradford has certainly uh, got their marker play right. Nick Shaw has run from dummy half three times and hasn't made hasn't made any ground at all. He is a danger player and Bradford are well aware of that. I do think the gaps will appear later on in the game. As, as legs tire out there, Shaw is the kind of player that can certainly exploit those gaps. Nick Shaw. Bradford sensibly using the forwards to bring this uh, ball away. Bradley there, just helping them out. Back to Robbie Paul, the skipper. Just 20 years of age, one of the youngest skippers in the game. Cook, oh, superb dummy by Paul Cook. He's looking for support on the inside. Well, does he need it? Not yet. Still looking for, for that line. And Leeds recover. Well, was a try squandered there. Tremendous break by uh, Paul Cook, but he seemed to be in two minds at the end of the run. Yeah, I think he had too many options there, Paul Cook. He could have passed inside there to Scales. He chose to try to score the try himself, then put a kick in that was a bad kick, and Leeds, at the end of all that, good chase through, recovered the ball. The ball was stolen out by Bradford, and they've got a penalty. To sum that up, really, I just think it was a fantastic break that was at the end wasted by a bad decision again. Well, it certainly is breathless uh, rugby down there, it's end to end. And uh, there is Paul Medley, the man I, uh, I mentioned, uh, a player who very often can turn a game, a, a man with the great speed in the forwards. Talking of speed, there is another player with it, Mick Shaw. George Mann, nice switch inside to Morley. Holroyd. Good high kick. Well picked up there by Cook. The full-back doing very, very well there. Hung back three or four metres for that kick. Matt Schultz, another of the former academy players at Leeds, coming on for the youngster. Jamie Field. Substitutes coming on very, very early, Joe. We must remember that unlike championship matches where there are four subs, there are only two substitutes in the cup. I'll try that. I don't think it's an injury situation. Certainly not here with Paul Medley. Just come on the field of substitute and a great charge down the field. Typical burst there by Medley. Puts the Bulls back on the attack. Cuts her back inside. Going back to those substitutions, I think it's mainly to keep the pace of the game high. They're not looking to save the energy of the players. And I think uh, Bradford... Uh, well, I don't think uh, Paul Cook realises that... Uh, well, it's uh, Robbie Paul, actually. I don't think he realises that uh, it was the sixth tackle. And a little back chap from the skipper, not wanted. There we see. Yeah, you'll have a look here. Robbie Paul won't let the ball go. It should be a clean changeover. He should hand the ball over to Lewis. Then to top that off, Robbie Paul is young, he's got to learn, he is the captain of the Bradford team. You cannot talk back to the referee. The referee's in charge out there, and, he's, and Stuart Cummings has marched him another 10 metres. Yeah, Stuart Cummings just uh, showing uh, who's in charge. Doesn't want any back chats. Leads after that uh, points blitz uh, from Bradford. 
using the substitutes to try to, to get back in touch. Marvin Golden there. Morley. But still this uh, Bradford defence holding. Holroyd. Well, again, he would look for the pass. One or two of the uh, Leeds players were far too deep, were hanging off. Holroyd sensibly holding onto the ball. On the fifth tackle, George Mann again with the kick. They seem to be like quite lost in attack, uh, Leeds. They, they're going the slow, but they've got no runners all the time. Their men are standing far too deep, and when Holroyd's running across, no one's there to run onto the ball. Two or three times, uh, Joe, on the sixth tackle, George Mann has ended up with the ball, and it, it didn't seem that tactically he should have ended up with it. Exactly right. It's, it's um, Holroyd or, or Mann that's ended up with the ball. They, they've put the wrong decision in, the wrong kicking at times, and I think there is a little bit of confusion there, maybe because it is a new half-back partnership. But certainly these two teams pushing this ball around and those Leeds changes were planned changes they weren't made out of any panic particularly but they were planned before this game and they believe firmly that Matthew Schultz will have a big impact when he comes on there he is number 15 Matthew Schultz a former amateur over on uh, Humberside no doubt about it that Dean Bell and Hugh McGann really are bringing a good uh, clutch of youngsters uh, on at Headingley. Leeds will have to get their defence sorted out on the right-hand side. On that last play, Bradford had six players on three Leeds players. Golden. Leeds punched uh, in midfield. Picked up by, uh, by Carl Furbank. And Bradford now sweeping it out wide. Leeds were punched in midfield. Good strong run again there by Doniger. Doniger, the Aussie forward, always emerging down that left-hand side. Sonny Nickel. Bradley. Back again to Furbank. Good pass inside there to, to Christie. Robbie Paul. Oh, he's got the pass out to Lockett. Lockett just couldn't get the pass out. That was a good tackle by Jim Fallon. He came in, he spotted the danger, and Fallon came off the wing to stop the problem. He did stop the problem, but he also touched the ball. The referee has ruled that the Leeds player, Fallon, was the last person to touch the ball, and therefore it'll be a Bradford feed at the scrum. Yes, I think we saw that his right arm went round and knocked it forward, uh, Joe. So, it's another six tackles to uh, Bradford, and they're using that to blindside again. Paul Medley. McDermott. Ooh, so near. That's so far. Sonny Nickel has another charge. Oh, that's a good tackle. Tremendous tackle there by Schultz. But still Bradford moving out to Bradley. Cook coming in well there. Back to Callan. Sam, he wants to get that ball over the line. He does, but he's in touch. Well, wingman Phil Hassan, he did well to retrieve that ball behind the line. It's always a risky area. They say a kick is only as good as its chase. This was a fantastic kick and a fantastic chase from Bradford. Put the pressure on Hassan, he's on him and his own in goal area and then forced him over the touchline. Once more resulting in a scrum with Bradford's feed and more possession. This is going to give Bradford their third set of six tackles here. Can the Leeds defence withstand? Well, with a knock-on like that, they will. Carl Furbank racing forward, but the ball hitting his shoulder, not really uh, having much chance there. 
but all credit to the Leeds defence, they came up very, very quickly to shut that down. Matthew Schultz. So, Leeds withstood there well over a dozen tackles on that line. Can they come back now? It's trailing by 16 points to four. Harvey Howard. Holroyd. For sure. You see the possession there, Leeds far in advance with 52 to 48 against Bradford. It's Bradford who have uh, certainly uh, taken this first half by storm. It's been all Bradford this half, they're certainly been on top for the most part of it. Oh, that's a towering kick ball, Paul cooked it superbly with that ball there. He took the ball on his fingertips, he never took his eye off it. He has uh, Schultz steaming in there for the tackle. That is superb full-back play. That kick almost went out of the stadium. Yeah, Paul Cook is fantastic here. Both substitutes from Leeds, Brain down the name, Goldie Man Schultz manages to take it cleanly. Jim Fallon. Former England B and Bath uh, Rugby Union wing. Neil Harmon, the skipper, trying to inspire this uh, lead side. A score now in these uh, remaining minutes of the first half would do their confidence good. Harvey Howard. Three metres from that line. Holroyd. He's got plenty of support out wide. Good tackling there by Medley. And Furbank. Again, Leeds looking to this short side. George Mann. Kevin Iro. A powerful man to stop. He's got the ball out there to a stand, but it's a forward pass. A forlorn look on Phil Hassan's face, but good cover again there from uh, Bradford. The pressure on Leeds forced the forward pass. This time it's Leeds that use the short side. Kevin Iroh draws a tackle and puts the pass in. Hassan's on the spot, but the ball did travel forward. They're only attacking one way, Leeds. They keep coming the same way all the time. There was two opportunities. They had to go their right-hand side in that last set of six. They had, they had numbers. Bradford had no players on that side, and they kept coming the one way. Both uh, coaches said that they expected a physical battle, a forward battle. Well, we have that, but we've certainly got some uh, wonderful open play. Medley to Callan. Bradford keeping this ball going over McDermott. He's released Sonny Nickel there. Who <laughs> ran into the welcoming arms of Harvey Howard. That's a good long pass. That's cleared uh, some problems in midfield. Gonna go. Oh, a beautiful pass from Bobby Paul. Well, it was a just a forward pass, but the thinking there was breathtaking. You'll have a look at this, a flick behind the back from Robbie Paul. Yeah, that's ball. You see the touch judge, the touch judge. If you just seen in the corner of the screen, the touch judge put the flag to his chest, which indicated to the referee that it was a forward pass. But when you think, Joe, a 20-year-old in a semi-final doing tricks like that. Well, worries is, where is it not a problem. Confidence is everything. Schultz. Leeds plowing a steady furrow down the middle. Just a couple of minutes remaining. That's a good pass to Cummins again. If he's given space, this Sir Francis Cummins, he's one of the fastest runners in the, uh, the lead side. Harmon leads desperate to pick up another four or six points here, just before the close of this half. Holroyd. Well shut down by Bradford, good defence there. By Bradley. Big Shaw. Oh, Leeds are judging that he was uh, pulled back. But the ball rolling dead. One or two were Leeds fans looking for a penalty try, but I don't think so. The ruling and the criterion is that he would have scored, and I don't think he would there. Yeah, he is a quick player, and the kick was the right idea. Bradley does get a hand to him and slow him down. I don't know, it was a possible, of a, a possible chance of a penalty there. It's 
Sonny Nicol. And I'm sure these closing seconds of this uh, first half, Bradford will just want to hold on to this ball. They'll keep it amongst the big men. Paul Medley. Donahue. To Christie. Paul. Has that little shuffle and then the pass out to Bradley. Lachlan picked it up out wide there. Back to, to Scales. Oh, and he caught a knock there. Jonathan Scales took a nasty knock there. Unintentional, I think, from uh, Neil Harmon. He went in with the shoulder just as uh, Scales ducked down. Joe, were any clearer as to who will meet St Helens at Wembley? No, but we've been saying in the half time interval what a fantastic open game it's been. The biggest difference for me is that both teams have been flying very, very deep in attack, but Leeds have had their half-backs in Mann and Holroyd quite flat, whereas Paul and Bradley have been also coming from deep and causing the Leeds backs problems. Paul Fletcher from the Leeds coaching staff. Paul, uh, the game's by no means over. What have you said at half-time? We've got to be patient. We've got to weather the first 10, 15 minutes and then hit back like we did the first half. No panic. No panic, whatever we do. Drizzle beginning to reappear here at the uh, McAlpine Stadium. It might just uh, affect the handling, but I think these two sides are such uh, are so adept at, uh, at handling. I doubt it. Donahue with a good uh, relieving kick, finding touch down that blind side. Surprisingly, quite a few handing errors from uh, Bradford, Joe. Yeah, I'm surprised, but then again, they have been throwing the ball about, putting it through hands and, and trying to exploit the gaps, so maybe you would expect quite a few more. Well, certainly when you attempt to play good open rugby, Steve, you do miss one or two balls. You do, and uh, Bradford have made more mistakes, um, but you also notice that they defended very well. They've, they've worked hard, they've had the numbers all the time, they seem to adjust good to the Leeds, uh, Leeds attack. They know that Leeds are only coming one way all the time so they can shift across, and they've done that well. Having uh, Goulden being well uh, looked after there by Carl Fairbank and, uh, and Medley. And Paul Medley again, the substitute number 15 there to the four again in that tackle. Harvey Howard, and I'm sure Dean Bell has... Uh, Instructed Harmon and De Howard to put in one or two charges down here. Good pass there from Morley. Harmon, but that was well read there by the the Bradford standoff, Graham Bradley. He came in, stopped the Leeds attack. Poor shot. To Holroyd. Holroyd really striking some uh, high kicks really testing his uh, former teammate. Well, Leeds should have picked that up, they haven't, but nevertheless, it's a knock-on, and it'll be a scrum down, and it'll be Leeds head and ball. You'll have a look here, Paul Cook gets up, he makes a mess of it, and Marvin Golden, he should have tried to dive on that ball, he should have made sure he covered the ball up, and then a quick play of the ball, Leeds could have been in with a chance there. But it doesn't make any difference, it still leads in possession, for Shaw coming away, nice uh, switch inside to George Mann, George Mann is through, oh he just can't stretch the, <laughs> he's not six foot, he needed a longer arm. And it looks as if uh, Mr Cummings is reaching for his uh, Sinbin card, he is, well he says that Donahue possibly was... Uh, interfering at the play of the ball and there we see behind the post there Jason Donahue the number nine on his way to the sin bin alleged to have interfered at the play of the ball Leeds wanted a quick play of the ball they wanted to use that ball to the right and according to Mr Cummings they were stopped from doing just that so a possible valuable two points here well you, you have to remember the markers have to be square and in front of the play of the ball the referee must have adjusted that Donahue stepped out that's the only thing I can think of, Steve, unless you saw something else in that replay. Well, his indication to referee was that he kicked at the ball, he struck at the ball, well, he certainly never done that, he held on to him, but I don't know why he was sent to the sin bin. Well, whatever Mr Cummins uh, says, it's 16 points to six now for Bradford, 
a valuable two points for uh, Leeds and a ten minute spell in the sin bin for Jason Donahue we'll have another look at this I think yes the referee must have, have judged that he, he tried to strike at the ball I think he was basically standing to his feet and his foot was in the area but whether he actually kicked at it or not I'm not quite sure his foot did touch the ball so mate once again Stuart Cummings right on the spot has probably made the right decision and of course under the uh, new rules uh, Steve introduced some weeks ago you cannot now kick out at the play of the ball you can't you can't play the ball forward and you cannot strike at the ball if you're marker so very quick refereeing there from Mr Cummings yes the penalty wasn't as crucial the two points it was actually the fact that now Bradford are without a man and that's going to cause problems for their defence Bradford then now down to 12 men Leeds have really got to make this numerical superiority tell Bradford will want to hold right to every one of these six tackle sequences they'll want to deny Leeds possession in this 10 minute sequence on the fifth tackle Kevin Iro takes it well Good take from Iro. Leeds will certainly want to give this ball some air, to put this ball out to the flanks, try to stretch this Bradford cover. Shaw. Bradford down to 12 men, Joe, and let Leeds have charged three times down the middle. Yes, they, they, they must now realise with the numerical advantage they have, they have to look to the players like Iroh, he can turn again, and if there's more space there to exploit, he will certainly do that. Well taken by John Scales. Good catch, good jump. There was great protection from the Bradford players, and they all got around, they all got around Paul Cook. Scales come across, end up taking it, but there was plenty of protection from the uh, oncoming Leeds players. Kevin Iro adjudged offside, so a relieving kick for Bradford Bulls, Paul Lachlan. Lachlan, 11 seasons with the St Helens, surprise a transfer this season, part of the deal that took Paul Newlow to Nosey Road. Penalties there with Bradford having 4-1, to one. that's quite a lot as well. Bradley, very powerful uh, player Bradley in midfield from the St George Club in, uh, in Sydney. Oh, Cal Fairbank, he spotted a chink of light there in the Leeds uh, defence, almost through. Paul, Doniger, he's got uh, support inside him but the pass uh, wasn't taken. No knock on, says uh, Mr Cummings. Lachlan. A little grubber kick there, but uh, just not paying off. I disagree. I don't think it was a sensible grubber kick at all, to be honest, Ray. There was, was very little option in that corner to, but to kick it. I think if they'd have gone wide, possibly a chance of a score out there. Well, we, we're back to differ, Joe. I think he would have been pushed into touch if he hadn't uh, kicked now. The other option was just to run the ball, get tackled on, on Leeds' goal line, hand the ball over. Leeds have got to run it out from their goal line. Let's stop arguing and get back to the pitch, yeah. <laughs> George Mann. Good pass inside to Morley. Well covered, and uh, Morley losing the ball. Penalty. Mr Cummings looking for uh, support from Tony Brown. He's touch judge. Well, I think Morley threw that behind him. Yeah, he, didn't, he never had control of the ball as he stood to his feet, he lost the ball by banging it against his leg, there was no interference at all from a Bradford player there for me. Once again, the touch judge made that ruling, Stuart Cummings never seen it, the touch judge ruled on that. Yes, and that ruling has put Leeds back on the attack. Holroyd, fortunate judgement there then for Leeds. Good dummy by George Mann, he spotted a gap there, can I will take the ball? No, he can't. What a sand does. Golden. Just five minutes remaining in the, the sin bin for Jason Donahue. Bradford desperate to hold out. Nice switch of play there from Holroyd. But again, well covered by this Bradford defence. The coach Brian Smith done a tremendous amount of work on this Bradford defence. 
George Mann. He's a powerful player. He gets the ball out to Hassan. But again, good scrambling cover. Sonny Nickel, the second row, getting across there. Iro. Holroyd. Can't get through. Tremendous credit on uh, Bradford's part there. That was superb defence, to the point where Leeds started arguing amongst themselves there that the, the Bradford attacking defence was so good, they managed to hold Leeds out and they really stuck for options. Brian Smith, the Bradford coach, former Hull and uh, St George coach, a scrum half himself, and of course, I think, as a scrum half, Joey knows the value of big, strong men. That's right, exactly right. It's amazing how many scrum halves pick very, very big uh, centres. Well, they, they realise from their playing days that it's the forwards that really dictated how they are allowed to play. So, Bradford doing well to come back there. Robbie Paul, beautiful sidestep from Paul. He's got 30 minutes to go. He's got to inside him. Jim Fallon doing well. But has he scored that? I think he has. He slid over the line. Mr Cummins is having a word with the in-goal. Judge David Bars, and he's judging a knock-on. Well, that will be an interesting decision, I think, to reflect upon. Robbie Paul shot for the line. Did he slide over? Great run from Robbie Paul, did everything on his own. He just set off from acting half-back, took them on with his pace. The defence did get to him, but as he crossed the line, we can't see from that angle, the referee ruled that he lost the ball. You'll have a look here, head on. Now, your ball hits the ground before the line. You still can't, well, you can't tell whether, whether it come out of his arm or not, but the touch judge, the uh, in-goal judge was right in front of him. If he slides over the line, holding the ball, then his momentum takes him over, it is a try. But difficult to see there, did he lose that ball as he was going over that line? Well, the in-goal touch judge has ruled that he's lost the ball before he crossed the line. And that is why we have in-goal touch judges. David Mears on the spot there. But the minutes ticking away with uh, Donahue in the sin bin. On the fifth tackle. That's a teaser for Bradford. Well played by Cook. Good, confident play by the youngster. And here we see that uh, effort again. There's the ball. Oh, it looks to be over the line. Looks to be just over the line. But it's Leeds now, coming back. Kevin Iroh, a couple of good runs needed from the big uh, Kiwi. Not this time. Picked up by Bradford Bowles, good play here to Auckland. He's got Scales outside him. Scales going for that corner. Superb tackle there, sliding again. And is he, I think, going to get the try? He is! A sliding tackle, a sliding try, but the try counts. And Scales, the big man, in for the try at the corner. Well, we've got incident, we've got controversy. Mr Cummins are judging that this was a try. Leeds. Here we see Leeds in possession, and then Iroh loses it. This is where it all stems from, Joe. That's right, and once Bradford get the ball again, the attack down the favourite left-hand side, Paul Lachlan speeds it well, this, this time decides to give the ball early to Scales. He takes on the, the uh, Leeds defence. There's nobody hold of him, and he's allowed to cross the line. That is a fair try. You see, Paul Lachlan, this is good play. He never waited to get up to, the, to draw the defence. He knew there was plenty of ground. Give the ball to the quicker player. He'll make ground faster than I can. Gives it to Scales. Golden there. A great attempt tries to get to him. Gib Gibbons comes across. Now, he's not held there. And he doesn't lift it. That's a fair try. Momentum carried it over. He never lifted his arm, carrying the ball off the ground. And that was a good ruling. I would agree with you there, Steve. Good, uh, good cross-tackling there from uh, Goulden, but not quite strong enough to hold out the big almost 16 stones. Former Leeds wing, Jonathan Scales. But no conversion from, uh, from Cook. 
but nevertheless Bradford move out even further 20 points to six now and haven't they got over that sin bin spell Donahue. I was just going to say, yeah, you'll see here a great ball out there to uh, to Lachlan. He sees that uh, there's open spaces there for the quick wing man. Gives it to Scales. Scales, a lot of determination there. You'll have a look. Now he's arm, the touch judge in the way. His arm never lifts up off the ground, and that's a fair try. But they've done it, and now they get they, they're back to their full complement of 13 yep. players. Bracket. I think significantly there, Joe. He never made a double movement, did he? That's right, he just kept the ball on the floor, let his momentum carry him over the line, and also no Leeds player at the end was holding him as well. And uh, Jason Donoghue there, the Bradford hooker, back in the action. 54 minutes gone, 20 points to six for Bradford. Howard. Did well to get that pass out. Neil Harmon. Crunching tackle there from Paul Medley. Had a good game since he came on this former Great Britain second row. To Gary Christie. A good line there from uh, Leeds. There is uh, Paul Medley. Powerful substitute. Sonny Nickel. Well, Dean Bell and uh, Hugh McGander, uh, Joe Glum, what can they do? Well, they can wait, because I know that things can change in, in this game of rugby league, and I'm sure they have the faith in the players out there. They certainly need a player like Kevin Ira to get back into this game. Bradford, they've made more tackles than Lewis, and they've been most effective. It's Lachlan again, it's this wing man again, Scares tries to get the ball inside. Great footer received by Cummins, but Cummins even more, uh, well, well received by the Bradford defence. Tremendous piece of play again by Lachlan. But no try this time. I think they could have been a bit stiff there, uh, Lewis, the fact that the ball went forward, the pass went forward inside. And then the loose man caught it, and then there was a scrum with uh, Bradford feed. He ruled the forward pass first, it should have been a uh, Leeds feed. Bradley putting pressure in midfield, Sonny Nickel trying to force his way over there, but being held up there by George Mann. Just a foot or so from the try. Donahue trying to get over, oh, he's played it to nobody! There was nobody there, a let up there for, for Leeds. Poor Donoghue, he didn't know that there was no one behind him. He looked for a quick play of the ball. Unfortunately, he was too quick for his teammates. Well, that's one for a question of sports. Gerald Cordell, Bradford and Wales winger. Gerald, that try couldn't have come at a better time, could it, for Bradford? Well, that's right, it just came just at the right time. You know, the boys have, uh, you know, they stuck together and they're doing the right thing. So uh, let's hope, you know, we can go on and win this now. The important thing is to keep your cool now, really, isn't it? Yeah, that's right, you know, the boys, obviously, they get, they're getting a bit tired and, uh, you know, dropping one or two balls, but they're, they're, sticking, they're sticking to the game plan, they're doing well. Thanks, Joe. Thank Gary Christie being very careful that he didn't knock on. Putting Paul Cook under pressure, though. The difference in the two halfbacks is that you're just seeing Graham Holroyd run across field and allowing the defence to come forward to him and uh, commit nobody. Robbie Paul, he runs straight. He's running the ball direct and committing the defence and getting them standing flat-footed. Penalty against Leeds. Here we see Holroyd goes in the tackle and then no need for Jamie Field to fall on top. Well, we did, we did mention early on that perhaps Leeds could have problems at, uh, at half-back, having had, you know, players of rich promise in the past. That's right, they, they, they have a new partnership there. They are, they are still finding their feet, so to speak. Bradford have just taken the game by the scruff of the neck with their two half-backs, and, and as uh, Steve said, 
the, the difference is that they are running at the defence and they're taking their opponents on. Yes, George Mann only playing uh, standoff four or five times in his uh, career. Jeremy Donegan. Carl Furbank, obviously taking a knock to the leg. Simon Knox, back on. Oh, beautiful ball! And there he is! We no sooner mention Simon Knox than there is the former Carl Eilus forward racing over at the side of the post. Well, Carl Furbank didn't look too happy as he trudged off, but I'm sure he'll be happy when he looks at this. It was Callan that put the short pass in, a lovely short pass to Knox. The gap was there, it was only a small gap, but he was through it in a split second. You'll see here, good ball from dummy half from, Donny, from Jason Donahue. Callan takes the defence, goes forward, he's running straight and forward. Fends off Holroyd, poor attempt to tackle there. Callan, uh, sorry, Simon Knox runs into a big hole. Iro never come across, Iro wasn't watching, and Knox scores a good try next to the post. That seals the game. Paul Cook, as he should have, a smile on his face. Two from four attempts. With, I think, the easiest attempt now to come. Just nine metres up, to the right of the post. No problems for the young Bulls fullback. The two points for the conversion, and Bradford moving comfortably away there now. Leeds in real trouble, 26 points to six. And who would have thought that? I must confess, I felt that this game was very, very evenly balanced, but Bradford proving me wrong. Yes, this is the Bradford play. As you say, Stevie runs out the defence, backs off a little bit, the gap appears because Kevin Arrow doesn't come through to take the man, and Knox goes over for the try. Less than 20 minutes uh, remaining. Leeds really have to find their form now. They've really got to move this, uh, this ball around. The wings not seen too much. Well, there is... Uh, Carl Fairbank, a farmer. I don't think he'll be trudging around the fields tomorrow morning, but uh, he'll not be too bothered. All right. Again, never played at Wembley. Dean Bell, seven cup winners medals, but less than 18 minutes for Leeds to haul themselves back in the game. 26-6. Penalty against uh, Harvey Howard. Interference at the play of the ball. There we see. Holding him down. I think there's a little hand in there in that uh, play the ball there. He knocked the ball down. He was just trying to play it. Seventy thousand pounds at stake at Wembley for the winners of the the Challenge Cup. Leeds or Bradford having to be content here with twelve and a half thousand. Bradford's Carl Furbank nursing the uh, injured ankle. Carl, this has turned out really better than you could have hoped for, hasn't it? Oh, it's a dream coming through here. We all over Leeds, you know. I don't think there's no way back for them. That start was quite something. I mean, the three tries so quickly. Yeah, we just blitzed them from the kickoff, and they've never recovered from it. The important time was just before half time. I thought when Leeds were coming back at you. Yeah, they always can have the say in the game, but now we've got back on top in the second half, and I can't see there's no way back for them. You're safe now, Ian. I think so. Thanks, Scott. A high uh, tackle there by Harvey Howard and Joe. That's two penalties conceded. Two penalties in quick succession by the same player. And now they're in kicking range too. Paul Cook, who's kicked well today, missed a couple, but certainly had a great start. And he's in kicking range here for two points for Bradford. And of course, whether Paul Cook kicks these goals or not, the minutes are ticking over. Bradford edging nearer to Wembley. Paul 
up, does a little backward step, then the shimmy. Almost like the old rumba and the samba. But it works, it's a goal. He needed it in off the upright. But a further two points from Cook. And I don't think those Bradford fans can really appreciate this score. 28 points to six. And I don't think anyone at this stadium felt that that would be the scoreline at this stage in this match, Joe. No, everybody I talked to beforehand said it would be a very close game. All the critics said that that's exactly what would happen. It's not done. Bradford have stormed into the lead and now lead 28 points to six. So, a trip to Wembley for Brian Smith he's taken St George in Australia to two of their grand finals but I'm sure he'll relish a final in England at Wembley Howard did well to get that ball to shore Fifteen minutes remaining then. Leeds, 22 points adrift. Golden, Holroyd. Again, another towering kick, but that man cooks there. Joe, oh, apart from uh, just one uh, knock on. Paul Cook has been admirable under the high balls. Yes, he's, he's caught very, very well with high balls. Maybe Leeds will be at fault for putting the ball a little bit too deep and not allow their chances to get through and put pressure on. Well, I was going to say, he's had plenty of practice in catching today because they haven't varied the kicks at all. Holroyd's just put it straight up there to him all day. You think Leeds, uh, Steve, might have been advised to put a little grubber kick through because Bradford's defence has been moving up very flat? Well, they haven't been able to, to attack good Leeds. They've been a bit short on the attacking ideas, but they could have tried the variation of the kicks. Little grubber kicks through. Uh, chip kicks, they've, they've all they've done all day is put the high ball to Cook, he's only dropped one all day. Bradley electing to throw the ball out wide instead of the kick on that fifth tackle, and Lachlan putting the grubber kick in. Good cover from Cummins. But again, this uh, Bradford defence eager to get up there, and it was the skipper, Robbie Paul, setting the example. Kept her leads in this 20 metre area. Jim Fallon, not had many touches of them all. Shaw, Holroyd, putting a lot of passes in, a lot of close passes, but not really going very far, Steve. No one's going forward with the ball, or either passing the ball or running cross field. You have to go direct, you have to get the defence going backwards on the back foot, then you can, then you can use your ball out wide. Leeds aren't doing that. But nevertheless, Leeds have a lot of stars in their uh, the team. One of them, like this man, Iro, can suddenly pull out something. Oh, almost there! The pass was uh, well intended. The movement out wide was good. Just the final catching of the ball. Just look at that. He floats it round. Francis Cummins couldn't take it. But that was good rugby, Joe. It was. He managed to attract the attention of Paul Lockley in his opposite centre. And as soon as he committed himself to the tackle, he put the ball round him, but unfortunately Gibbons just couldn't take the ball. Yeah, Kevin Iroh's come from the left-hand side over the right-hand side, done everything right, committed two players, offloaded, great ball around the corner, but Francis Cummings just couldn't take the final pass. Sonny Nickel. Been in good form since his transfer from St Helens to Bradford. Great Britain second row. And good work too from that other second row there. Jeremy Donagher. Bradley. Loses the ball. A chance for Leeds. Again, good cover tackle by Medley and uh, Robbie Paul. Allen. Had to pass inside there. He was being forced into touch. And the ball has gone loose. Good foraging there by Medley. He's had a fantastic game, Medley, since he came on a substitute. He's, he's blocked the defensive on this defensive formation on this left-hand side for Bradford, and he's really, really put himself into the game. Leeds 
Well, I was about to say with a chance, but a lost ball. And uh, David Longo coming on for Paul Cook. Possibly tactical, would you say, Joe? A breather for Cook? I'm not quite sure. I don't think that uh, Brian Smith will consider the game completely won yet. Um, so it must be uh, either a knock to, uh, to Cook that's caused the substitution. Nickel. Keeping the momentum going forward, pushing that lift, that kick down the short side again. Sensible play by the hooker. And uh, from the Bradford bench news of Paul Cook is that uh, he was forced to leave the field. He'd uh, pulled his hamstring in training yesterday, and he's aggravated that injury as the game went on. So uh, Paul Cook, who's a lot of fielding of the ball this afternoon, was forced to leave the field. Paul Cook must be must be built very strongly if he pulled a hamstring yesterday and can play today, I can tell you. It's very painful hamstring injury. Not only that, but he's played superb and kicked very well as well. He certainly has had a good game. Goulden. Leeds taking the kick very, very quickly. Minutes ticking away, less than ten minutes remaining here. For Leeds to have a chance to haul themselves back and make a third successive Wembley appearance. 28 points to six. Jamie Field. Holroyd. George Mann. Well held by Longo. Doolan, Shaw spotted some space down that far side. But it's the fifth tackle. Holroyd chancing his arm with a run. Now a kick. Cummins is there, Scares is there, but Cummins has the ball! He can't get over it. But it's the handover on the sixth tackle. Good effort there by Francis Cummins. Just hadn't got the strength to shrug off the Bradford cover and score, but a good effort. He's the variation, the kick we talked about. Leeds eventually tried to put the little chip over the top. Cummins does gather it, but the defence there again from Bradford outstanding and stops the chance. George Mann coming off there. The big Leeds standoff. And Anthony Gibbons replacing him. Oh, forward pass. Yeah, Lockman here, he makes a half a break. David Longo, he's backing up superbly, but it was just a touch ball with Stuart Cummings in uh, good position. Joe, as an ex-centre, uh, you've tangled a few times with uh, Paul Lockland. He really has had a good game there, hasn't he? He's put a lot of uh, problems on Leeds. Outstanding game. You see, he has the size and the, and the range and the strength. It's, it's very hard to come to terms with the tackle. And he also has speed that goes with it, so it, it makes it very, very difficult to contain him. That mistake picked up by Bradford. Bradley. Bradford eager for more now down this side. Paul Medley. He certainly can run this, uh, this forward substitute. Good play there by, uh, by Medley. He gained about 15 metres. Puts the pressure back on the Leeds line. Longo. Out to Nichols. Nichols got some space, but a good tackle there by Kevin Iro. He sealed that gap well. Gary Christie. Still gets the ball away. Back to McDermott. Rubber kick. Good recovery. To the Gibbons. 
One thing about Bradford, they're playing good, good rugby league. They're a long way in front. You can think, okay, we want to close the game up. They're still trying to put points on the board. That's exactly right. They're, they're attacking in numbers and, and chanting their arm at times. But in defence as well, Steve, they're, they're all playing for each other. They're all defending each other's space. They're wanting to work for each other and really close leads down. And I think it's been a fantastic team performance from Bradford. Leeds still gallantly attempting to pierce this defence close in, but not having much luck. Jeremy Donagher, the man of the match from St George in Sydney, Australia. Picked up by Brian Smith, the team he used to coach. Oh, and there's a slip. Can Leeds take advantage of that ball? No, they can't. Well, Leeds surely should have picked that ball up. There's an example of just how much Bradford won this game. Although the ball was lost here in the tattle, and the Leeds players were in the vicinity to drop on it, who comes by but Bradley to gather the ball? It certainly was a good tackle by uh, Adrian Morley, but there was a hesitation in the Leeds ranks, and uh, you can't have that, Steve. Uh, young Jamie Field, he thought twice about it. That little bit of hesitation gave Bradford the opportunity to get the football back. Once there's a loose ball on the ground, you must dive on it straight away. Less than five minutes remaining then. Bradford in the driving seat here now, looking to be returning to Wembley. Well, have a look here, it's a bad pass. Now, Jonathan Scales, once again, you should be diving on them balls. You try to bend down, pick them up, you're always a chance of making a mistake. It was an early tackle, he should have just dived on, covered the football up, played it, Bradford keep possession. Well, Brian Smith making his way down to the side of the pitch, I'm sure, eager to congratulate his side. They really have worked to his, uh, his game plan. And when you're struggling, nothing goes right. Marvin Golden unable to hold the ball, no pressure on him, but still it slips. So, head and ball at this scrum to Bradford and a very proud Bradford coach, Brian Smith, to Bradley. Paul looks for his forwards, finds Paul Medley. Paul back to Donegan. Oh, ability to get that pass off, and Robbie Paul is coming again. Weaving, darting, dodging in midfield, the Kiwi. McDermott to Longo, he's got Nickel outside, he misses out Nickel to Simon Knox. Tried to pass inside, and McDermott gets back. Well, even at this late stage, just look at that there. That's a testament to the fitness of these players. McDermott getting back there with less than three minutes remaining. Well, getting a bit fancy there, Bradford. They come back up with a ball, but they'll try and flick passes. It's not necessary. I was just looking over the dugout. Brian Smith standing there. He was shaking his head when they were throwing them flick passes. They've just got to control the ball now, Bradford. They've got this game won. But yet Bradford are looking for more points. As we said, to their credit, they have moved the ball around. They have put the uh, the plays on. But just look at that. The tackles, there's not much difference, Joe. It just shows who's made better use of the ball in midfield. Exactly right. That's right. When Bradford have the ball, they have risked things. They've, they've put the odd pass out that you wouldn't normally expect to see in a semi-final, but they've reaped the dividends. Chris Casey, the Bradford chairman, now joining Brian Smith down there. It's the big statistic we didn't see there was the missed tackles. I should imagine that Leeds have missed far more tackles than Bradford had. Leeds still looking to move this ball down this right wing. Come, come, come. 
Leeds still looking for that break. Howard. Good strong run and a good pass to Golden. Good play by Leeds. But it's Bradford with the points on the board and 28 of them as we move into the last 60 seconds. Morley. Gratefully accepted by Simon Knox. I don't think he could believe the ball was coming. So Bradford are looking to make their first appearance at Wembley in 23 years. And Kiwi skipper Robbie Paul having the chance to become the youngest ever cup final captain. 20 years of age last month. And he could beat Sean Edwards by a year. Medley. And there is the final uh, hooter. The Bradford players and Robbie Paul leap in the air. And those Bradford fans, they've waited an awfully long time. 23 years since they were last at Wembley. 1949 since they last had a Challenge Cup win. It will be a real Roses battle against St Helens on Saturday, April the 27th. Tremendous performance, certainly. Matthew Elliott, assistant coach, and Brian Smith had done their homework. But that hat-trick from uh, Jonathan Scales proving the big difference, John. Scenes of joy, jubilation, the fans can't contain themselves, it's been a long, long way, the Bradford Bulls are back, they really have performed, I'm sure that gentleman remembers one or two previous finals, Robbie Paul, what a good game he had from the half-back position, as Steve Sims said, he ran at the heart and that proved the difference. A delighted uh, Brian Smith, but a surprised Brian Smith. Why would I be surprised? We planned on this, we worked hard for it. Uh, it's a little, uh, the scoreline's a little uh, of a surprise, I suppose, but and if you've seen the work these guys have done and they've just started to taste what success is like if you work hard for it. Absolutely storming start. That must have been more than you expected. It was what we, what we planned for and hoped for, and uh, certainly, we, well, we could have even had a couple of other tries in that period of time. And, almost put the game to bed in the first 20. You must have been very pleased with the way that your players responded after that great start because Leeds kind of came back in that in that first half, didn't they? They did, yeah. There are a, a lot of quality players in their team and, and with so much at stake, you wouldn't expect any less of a team that, than to fight back. But I thought my boys powered on. They did the job all the way to the wire. It was a great effort. It's nearly a quarter of a century since Bradford have been at uh, Wembley. It's nice for the city, isn't it? Almost as old as me, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Congratulations. And, uh, a young man will make a record by being, uh, I think, the youngest captain at Wembley, Robbie. OK, I'm excited. This is what we wanted and this is what we came for. We're glad we did it for the crowd, we're glad we did it for our families and we're glad we did it for ourselves. You can't expect to the winning margin as big as that, though, really. We did. We're going all out. We didn't want, you know, we weren't going to come second. The only way to you know, make sure that you're going to do good is to do good, you know what I mean? I mean, look, your, your teammates responded really well because, I mean, Leeds were never really out of the game late in the first half, were they? We, we prepared for this, we had a whole month to prepare for this, 